коллеги, ну, в принципе, мы готовы начинать. Сейчас покажем вчерашний кейс, который был в операционной. Соответственно, если будут какие-то вопросы, пожалуйста, задавайте. Сам кейс представим, естественно, на русском языке. Сразу могу сказать, что пациентка чувствует себя прекрасно, без какого-либо неврологического дефицита. Вчера была небольшая склонность к тошноте. Ну, понятно, потому что есть умеренная там, пневмоцефалия. Не более того, нет никаких, вот несмотря на экстрадуральное удаление наклоненного отростка, нет изменений никаких ни на лице, то есть нет ни синяков, ни там, отечные глаза, ни околомоторных нарушений. То есть и по неврологии, и, скажем так, по периферической неврологии все вполне э, прилично. Поэтому мы сейчас покажем этот э, случай и потом просим профессора, чтобы он сделал какие-то комментарии уже непосредственно к этому. Спасибо. Дмитрий Алексеевич, лечащий доктор, расскажет. Доброе утро, профессор, доброе утро, коллеги. Разрешите представить вам короткое видео основных этапов операции. Катетеризация верхней щитовидной Катетеризация верхней щитовидной артерии – это выделение поверхностной височной артерии, начальный этап. Удаление, резекция переднего наклоненного отростка. Удаление его верхушки. Вскрытие твердой мозговой оболочки. Обратите внимание на идеальный гемостаз. Начало диссекции силевые щели. Формирование микроаностомоза. Микроаностомоз сформирован. Далее выделение ветвей супраклиноидного отдела внутриконнекционной артерии и временное клипирование с дальнейшей внутрисосудистой аспирацией. Вы видели рассечение дистального дурального кольца и клипирование аневризмы на фоне внутрисосудистой аспирации. Купол аневризмы абсолютно мягкий. Ну и твердая мозговая оболочка ушита и герметизирована. Далее мы покажем на ролик после операционного КТ нативное изображение. Без значимых зон шумии э, включается пневмоцефалия. Также пациентке вчера была выполнена СКТ-ангиография. Здесь мы видим в режиме 3D микроаностомоз. В режиме 
3D э, клипированная аневризма и э, сосуд. Ну и схематично. Э, схема клипирования аневризмы с э, использованными клипсами из кулап. Спасибо. Профессор, could you comment, please, the operation? Uh, the vid video now that we presented is well, well edited. Uh, additionally, uh, I can explain, the, as I told you in the morning yesterday, uh, the yesterday's surgery, the retrograde suction decompression was uh, very important uh, because, uh, the, as you saw, the annulus was uh, huge and uh, the left optic nerve was uh, so compressed. So without the decompression of aneurysm, uh, we have to add much more stress to the optic nerve, which was compressed by the aneurysm. But uh, with the retrograde suction decompression, uh, the, the very gently the optic nerve is decompressed and we can make the space in between the aneurysm and the optic nerve. And uh, it was easy to put a clip uh, on the appropriate uh, appropriate area of the, the neck, and um, uh, we could confirm the, uh, all the imp important structures like uh, uh, superophysial artery, which was arising from uh, medial aspects of the internal carotid artery. Of course, uh, we have to confirm simultaneously uh, whether the such uh, important perforators was uh, uh, was associated with the aneurysm or not. Of course, uh, in this case, such an important perforator was not associated with aneurysm. So uh, yesterday, the uh, aneurysm was uh, clipped easily with the suction decompression. So the, to, to do this with, uh, uh, to do this, the retrograde suction decompression through the uh, super uh, super uh, <laughs> super thyroid artery uh, we have to export the uh, uh, cervical common carotid external carotid internal carotid uh, 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 appropriately without bleeding like uh, I, I, I showed you yesterday. Um, I heard that uh, in, uh, especially in Europe, the many of uh, uh, carotid stenosis is uh, perform, uh, carotid end arterectomy is performed by a vascular surgeon, not a neurosurgeon. So, uh -huh. It really depends, but uh, in Russia, probably m most of uh, open surgery. You do? You yeah. do? Uh, see, yeah. uh, it's a good information. The, because uh, I, I have a concern of the uh, uh, not familiar to, to open neck for neurosurgeon. Uh, in, in general, it's not familiar for neurosurgeon. Uh, if a neurosurgeon does not perform a carotid end But it, it's a good for you. Uh, to have a CEA experience. So, the, for such a neurosurgeon who has experience of a carotid and arterectomy, it's easy to, to export the carotid. And uh, the, it's, easy, it's easy to, to uh, secure the superthyroid artery uh, for cannulation like yesterday. The yesterday I used, uh, I used uh, uh, five French, five French size of uh, uh, infantile feeding tube. Five French infantile feeding tube is good enough to do a retrograde suction decompression. But uh, in uh, some patient 
who has a very small, narrow, super thyroid artery, it is uh, difficult to chinulate five French catheter into a super thyroid. In such case, we have to use four French. But the four French is very small, so even if you clamp the common carotid and the external carotid like yesterday, the, even the, the blood is uh, sucked well through the four, four, four French catheter, the uh, sucked, sucked blood amount is not uh, sufficient. And uh, the suction decompression uh, cannot be done uh, well uh, sufficiently. So I recommend you to use a five French uh, catheter when you perform the retrograde suction decompression. And um, mm, additionally, yesterday uh, I didn't secure the ophthalmic artery because to secure the ophthalmic artery in this case, uh, we have to the circumferentially dissect the uh, distal dura ring. And uh, the, 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 aneurysm, the aneurysm yesterday was very big, and uh, it was not necessary to secure the ophthalmic artery. But in some case, the, without occlusion of uh, suit, uh, ophthalmic artery, the too much back row through the ophthalmic artery was strong. So uh, uh, the additionally, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, due to the backflow from uh, ophthalmic artery, you can't get uh, uh, sufficient decompression of aneurysm. In such case, we have to occlude the ophthalmic artery after secu securing it. Uh, and uh, another important uh, important thing: the location of uh, uh, location uh, to put the distal clip distal to the aneurysm. Yesterday, fortunately, I could put the distal clip distal to the aneurysm proximal to PCOM origin. This position is ideal in a spraclinal of the aneurysm. Uh, but if the aneurysm was too big, especially the neck was very wide, the temporary clip distal to the aneurysm must be placed distal to a PCOM origin or anterior corridor distal to an anterior corridor. In such case, the anterior corridor and the PCOM is included in the tentative trapping. And uh, during, uh, due to uh, the, the suction decompression, the blood in the uh, anterior corridor artery and the PCOM is uh, sucked. And if the patient has a very bad collateral, especially in uh, anterior corridor artery territory, Immediately, patient have the uh, disappearance of MEP due, due to a sufficient amount of uh, blood sucking. I have uh, one bad experience of uh, hemiparesis uh, after surgery of uh, suction, little blood suction decompression, the clipping. The clipping was perfect, but uh, during uh, the little blood suction decompression, MEP immediately disappeared around 30 seconds after beginning of the retrograde suction decompression. Clipping was easy. The, the tentative occlusion time was around five, five seven minutes. But uh, MEP disappeared. Fortunately, MEP recovered around uh, five, 10 minutes later after the flow of the uh, blood flow. But, uh, uh, immediately after the surgery, patient had a hemi hemiplegia. And uh, we checked the uh, diffusion MRI, and the MRI shows a high signal in uh, internal capsule. So we have to be careful when we perform the retrograde suction decompression not to include the anterior corridor artery in the tentative trapping. We should put the uh, distal clip, distal to the annulus, must be uh, proximal to uh, anterior corridor artery. But uh, depends on the uh, aneurysm size and the location, uh, anterior corridor artery must be included in a tentative occlusion. In such case, uh, we should perform the uh, uh, retrograde suction, uh, sucking blood uh, very uh, carefully, not too, not too strongly, 
And uh, always uh, we have to check in MAP. Uh, and uh, if MAP disappeared, immediately, immediately we have to reflow. Uh, very, the, the suction decompression time, temp temporary occlusion time, must be shortened in such case. But this is uh, another uh, trick to, to be careful. Mm. Uh, and uh, another, uh, another one thing, yesterday, after first clipping, I, I used uh, seven, six, uh, seven, eight, two, two clips to crow the, uh, the main part of neck. But uh, the super, super lateral part of, of aneurysm had an atherosclerotic change, and the medial part of aneurysm has a, a very thin wall. Because of this, the aneurysm looks dead. But uh, after the opening aneurysm and I took out the uh, inside thrombus, uh, and after mobilizing aneurysm a bit, the suddenly arterial breathing, breathing come because of a very thin part was, uh, was uh, not completely occluded, the media part. So I added the, the fenestrated straight clip, two clips, just a par, uh, uh, just a distance to a first, first two clips. Then uh, I could uh, occlude the medial thin part of the aneurysm, then completely occluded the aneurysm. So in a large giant aneurysm, it often happened. Uh, the thin part, especially thin part of aneurysm, cannot be occluded easily. In such case, the, the fenestrated clips uh, helps a lot. Um, uh, these, are, these are the main uh, uh, key point, uh, the surgery yesterday. Any, any other questions? Коллеги, задавайте вопросы, если есть комментарии. Потому что вчера, например, особенно в YouTube, много было вопросов. Соответственно, если что-то появилось, особенно за вчерашний там день, спрашивайте, почему, например, были вопросы корковый анастомоз стали шить и так далее. Всем все понятно. Ну, я вчера пытался, в принципе, объяснять, что хорошее коллатеральное кровообращение, что было ПСА вполне патентное, с другой стороны, ЗСА, поэтому не стали что-то серьезное предпринимать. Нет вопросов, да? Спасибо большое. Это действительно оправданно, и все очень ясно для всех, что философия и техника here <laughs> games uh, all together. So if you wouldn't mind, we can proceed to the lecture. Okay. Could, you, could you please? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, today, uh, uh, I'll show my uh, special instruments. Uh, many, uh, many of you know the super bypass, and uh, the, my prefer, pref, uh, preferred microscope, uh, which was uh, provided uh, by Mitaka, at, uh, Mitaka, in, uh, uh, Mitaka Company in Tokyo. Because uh, I have been using uh, uh, 
Zeiss microscope, including Pentero 900. My, my preferred microscope was, used to be a uh, Zeiss NC31, uh, which was developed around uh, 30 years ago when I became a neurosurgeon. At the time, the NC31 was the best microscope because uh, uh, that was the first model of a varioscope. Uh, the focus length uh, is not fixed. It's a variable, variable, and uh, that was uh, the kind of a revolution in the neurosurgical world. And uh, I have been used uh, uh, NC31 around uh, for uh, nearly 20 years uh, during uh, in uh, during Abashiri era. Uh, but uh, uh, in I, I moved to, to Sapporo from Abashiri in 2012, seven years ago. Unfortunately, unfortunately at that time, uh, uh, Zeiss stopped to provide uh, the maintaining parts of uh, NC31, so I have to switch to a new model. So I, I decided to use uh, uh, Pentero 900. Uh, the same model uh, with yesterday. But uh, the problem of a Zeiss microscope, uh, especially uh, after NC4, uh, NC4, Pentel 800, eight, uh, Pentel 900, and the current Kinevo, the biggest problem of, uh, the, of that, those microscope is uh, uh, zooming speed, very low. Uh, even if yesterday also, even we set the zooming speed fastest, the from a minimum to maximum, uh, it takes around five seconds, more than five seconds. And uh, uh, as I showed you yesterday, during microanastomosis like STM cell bypass, when we penetrate the vessel wall, we need the highest magnification and uh, confirm the exact point to penetrate needle, and uh, we have to find uh, the pen penetrating uh, another wall point uh, with the highest magnification. But after penetrating and uh, pull out the, the needle, then we have to zoom out, and uh, we have to confirm the uh, surrounding the, and, uh, the situation, and. Uh, the, we we uh, we want to check the uh, uh, tail of thread. For your tail of thread is, and uh, by pulling the uh, needle, the tail thread can be pulled, and uh, we have to stop the pulling the needle at the appropriate length of a tail tail end of a thread. To to check this, we need uh, the lowest magnification. But uh, if you take a uh, five minute from a minimum to maximum and the maximum to minimum, and as I showed you yesterday, I, I, I did uh, around 20 stitches in STM cell bypass. At least you need the two times of uh, up, up and down, of zooming in, zooming out, 10 seconds. 10 seconds and the 20, 20 stitches, you spent just moving microscope 200 seconds, more than three minutes. This is a big problem because everybody knows in a cerebral microanastomosis, the shortened the temporal occlusion time is a very important issue. Everybody knows. It is like F1, F1 racing. You see, I always tell, tell my young guys, our microscope we use every day, the microscope is same with F1 machine. We need a very high spec, high specification. I have been, same, I have been telling same thing to Zeiss for 20 years, but they never respond. They never improved their products. So 
I decided to, to use a, a Zeiss microscope in 2012. After buying Pentel 900, I used, actually I used 900. I fight it with a, a Pentel 900, very low speed zooming, but it was terrible. So I switched to, to use a Mitaka microscope because Mitaka very cooperative to improve their products to make the zooming speed faster. This is uh, the, my uh, uh, short history about the uh, developing a microscope. Anyway, uh, I can show you uh, my uh, special instruments. For uh, uh, microanosmosis, we need a, a very accurate skill, accurate technique, but for this uh, accuracy, we need uh, uh, precise micro, sport, micro instruments. Not only precise, but also a very strong forceps. Like this. This is a, a tip of a super bypass forceps. I made a, a long platform. This area, you can see here is a platform, 10 millimeter. Uh, we have a two, two, uh, two variation, 10 millimeter platform and a seven millimeter platform. Depends on your preference. I prefer 10 millimeter, but uh, someone pr uh, prefers seven millimeter. It's okay. You, you can use uh, either, either one. And uh, this is uh, the bayonet type micro forceps, the slight curved and the straight one. We need both. Uh, only, only straight tip uh, in deep area, it doesn't work well. Yeah, you need the slight curved one. And uh, uh, we have uh, three variations of uh, uh, actual uh, lengths, seven centimeter, nine centimeter, and 11. The, in uh, many, in, ma in uh, almost condition, the nine centimeter is good. But when you have to stitch uh, proximal PCA or uh, basal artery, basal bifurcation, or you have to stitch basal trunk through, uh, through the translibian approach or something, you need 11 centimeter. Of course, the, the to stitch basal artery, uh, Many of you feel, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, nobody stitch basal artery, right? But if you, if you treat the basal artery aneurysm or PCA aneurysm, mm -hmm. in such a, e even in such a difficult aneurysm, very bad complication happen. Neck laceration happen. Parent artery injury happen. Uh, PCOM injury happened during a manipulation. PCOM was uh, uh, injured at the P1, PCOM, P2 junction, and the P, P after, after injuring, PCOM was uh, swimming with the breathing. Can you imagine? But if something happened like that, you have to stitch. Of course, such a PCOM cannot be, uh, re cannot be uh, reconstructed, reconstructed, maybe. But if possible, you should try. But uh, at least you have to stop the bleeding, the injured hole at the PCA. You can put the PCOM, you can put the temporary clip on the PCOM to stop the bleeding. But uh, another way, another, uh, another hole on the PCA is still remaining. To stop the bleeding from the hole, you have to stitch there, PCA. In such, in such situation, you need a good instrument like this. And uh, uh, in, uh, in, if you are right-handed, in your left hand, you need a straight bayonet forceps. In your right hand, slight curved forceps or needle holder, then 
you can meticulously stitch the hole with a 10 zero or 9 zero. For this uh, bad, bad situation, uh, we have to prepare the, the excellent instruments, appropriate instruments for the, such, a, such a bad condition. And this is a needle holder. Uh, we have a, a three variation of uh, the tip angle, 30 degree, 45 degree, 60 degree, and uh, three variation of uh, actual length, seven centimeter, nine centimeter, 11 centimeter. So totally we have uh, nine uh, variations of uh, uh, micro forceps. Like this. This is uh, the forceps, 30 degree forceps. Uh, I am using the, uh, in, in this case, I am using a nine centimeter like this. On the, the wet gel form, you can see, left hand is a simple straight super bypass. Left, left side, simple straight one. This is a slight curved uh, nine centimeter forceps. I am uh, uh, doing a, a stitching of a gel form like this with the highest magnification like this. It looks easy. It's easy because gel form uh, in the sh share, plastic share. Uh, with a slight, slight curve, uh, you can easily control the, the holding needle like this. And uh, I'm holding a needle uh, in a, with a left hand forceps. Uh, it's a very strong to grasp, to hold, because the inside of a platform has a, uh, has a modification of a non-slippery with a tungsten. Uh, this is a, a very strong uh, modification of a surface, not slippery. And uh, this is a very strong 60 degree ne uh, needle holder. You can see in a very deep area, it works, it helps so much. So this kind of uh, uh, bayonet type long needle holder uh, is for a special condition, a very deep and a very difficult condition. But in a vascular surgery, cerebral vascular surgery, this kind, uh, the, such, a, such a bad condition may happen. To save the patient, to, to to, to prevent the, the bad complication, even in, in a, such, a, such a trouble, we need a good, excellent instruments like this. So the forceps, straight forceps, bayonet forceps, and uh, uh, needle holder, bayonet needle holder. These are very important, quite important. And the microscope. As I told you, specification of a microscope is very important. Ah, it's a misspelling, high magnification. <laughs> High magnification, high magnification, high magnification, it's necessary, high resolution, high speed zooming, at least 4K video camera, high definition ICG video camera. Nowadays, Kinebo has a high definition ICG video camera. 
But uh, before Kinebo, uh, even 900, Pentero 900, the ICG camera is not a high definition. It's a standard definition. So, uh, but uh, my microscope, Mitaka and MM80, they can provide 4K video camera, high definition ICG camera. And the price of these cameras is uh, almost similar with uh, <laughs> standard definition cameras. And uh, the high, especially high magnification is very important. Uh, but but uh, this is uh, uh, about the ICG camera. Uh, you can see huge M1 an aneurysm like this. What we did to put a, put a clip to the proximal to the aneurysm and the confirm the lenticular steroid out there after STM cell biopsy. You can see without decompression of aneurysm, the, we can't see anything, only proximal spiraclinal internal carotid and A1. But after tentative occlusion, three point occlusion, ICA, A1, and MCA distal, and the direct decompression, direct puncture of aneurysm, then we can confirm the the important perforators the, from bifurcation of carotid and the anterior corridor artery. This is the proximal clip to the aneurysm, preserving an anterior flow to A1. And here, you can see this is a lenticular steroid artery here. Uh, we could put the clip just the proximal to a uh, lenticular steroid artery. So the aneurysm uh, could be preserved, uh, comp uh, uh, could be clipped, preserving a lenticular steroid artery like this. Uh, you could see the, it was too fast. Uh, you could see the, the lenticular steroid artery was uh, very clearly with a high definition camera. Uh, this is a, a A1 perforators and the anterior corridor artery. And uh, you can see here. Here is the distal part of M1. You can see here, lenticular straight artery, very clearly. So this is a high definition. The CT angel shows a double STMC anastomosis and uh, trapping, complete trapping of aneurysm, preserving a blood flow to A1 and all the perforators. And another important thing is the maximum magnification. Do you know the, the exact value of the, the magnification value of uh, Pentel 900? Pentel 900 highest magnification is uh, 16 times. 16 times is uh, too weak for uh, neurosurgery, especially for cerebral vascular surgery. In a tumor surgery, 16 times is well, good. But uh, in a cerebral vascular surgery, especially to do a moya moya bypass, very tiny bypass, 16 times is too small, too weak. So I always ask uh, uh, Zeiss to make the uh, maximum magnification at least 20 times uh, in the previous 20 years. But they, <laughs> they didn't un <laughs> respond me. Because they, they, told, uh, they told me, uh, because, uh, because of the investigation of uh, marketing, uh, no, no demand such a too high magnification in the neurosurgery world. Is it true? No. The, the many of the neurosurgeons, cerebral vascular surgeon requires high magnification. Uh, just, just 20 times, not, not so strong. But uh, uh, 
it's a it's a kind of a dream. The even the Leica microscope uh, around 80 times. Before Pentero, the NC31 was 18 times, which I was used. 18 times was good. But uh, nowadays, uh, we need at least 20 times. So I asked Mitaka. The Mitaka told, uh, answered, if you want, the, they can respond for any magnification, for any, any power magnification. If you want 30 times, 40 times, they can provide it. Actually, uh, their maximum magnification model is uh, 77 times for a surgical microscope. Mainly such a high power microscope is used by a, a plastic surgeon who perform the uh, 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 lymphatic tube uh, anastomosis or uh, hand, hand repairing the, the uh, amputation repairing something. But in neurosurgery, at least 20 times to 24 times it's uh, good enough, even for moya moya disease. And the zooming speed, I, I know, I, as I told you, Zeiss microscope, it's uh, five seconds. Kinebo bit uh, uh, become faster, but uh, still Kinebo uh, takes around three, three seconds. Uh, much, much, much faster than five seconds, but uh, the standard microscope around the, the five seconds from a minimum to maximum, maximum to minimum, zooming speed. Too slow. So I asked Mitaka, tune up the zooming speed to 0 0.5 seconds seven years ago. They answered. Uh, Professor Kamiyama, uh, Professor Tanikawa, uh, we may, uh, we may be, it, it may be possible, but uh, uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 seconds is uh, too fast, and uh, uh, we have, a, uh, we are not, they are not sure whether the the mechanical system is uh, tolerated or not. So, uh, at the time, they tuned up to uh, one second. Like this. So uh, we, we made a one second zooming, one second zooming with uh, MM80. So, and uh, with, with this microscope and uh, the Zeiss microscope, uh, I, uh, uh, stat I, I made a statistical analysis. This is a standard microscope, Pentero 900. Zooming speed, five seconds. Again, you can see, zooming, five seconds. 5.43 seconds, too slow. Fly can be stopped on the, on the microscope. <laughs> or you can sleep during zooming, zooming. Uh, during anastomosis, you may sleep. This is a, this is a, uh, uh, this is a, this n n the next one. You see? Mitaka turbo zoom. One second. The, this is a comparison of uh, one stitch. You see, with the mitaka, you can, you can finish one stitch less than 30 seconds. It takes 36 seconds. Both stitching I did. Surgeon is the same. No bias. So, 
difference, seven seconds in each uh, between the, uh, these two models. So we, with the seven second difference, totally we have a two minutes, two minute difference. Statistical, statistical analysis, of course, p value like this, significant difference, of course. But uh, the, the somebody somebody uh, have have a have a doubt. Ah, Professor Tanikawa, you have a bias in a, in a Zeiss microscope. You intentionally stitch slower in a Mitaka microscope. You stitch faster. No, no, no way. Because uh, both patient is actually my patient. Why I I I I can make the bias such a bias. So it's it's a it's a very important. So at this moment, the the turbo zooming was one second. And uh, with uh, this, this turbo zooming system, we used uh, for, for two years. And the microscope mechanical system uh, had uh, no problem, no trouble. So uh, Mitaka company uh, had uh, uh, confidence. Oh, it's good. Our system is very... Uh, uh, huh? durable. So I asked them to make the a super turbo zooming system, 0 0.5 seconds. Then they did it. Now uh, we are using 0 0.5 seconds. This is uh, the actual case of ACOM, previously called ACOM aneurysm, like this. The patient had a subrogate hemorrhage and in, in the first uh, treatment, uh, he had uh, the coiling. But unfortunately, the six months later, the recurrent, uh, recurrent was found. So the patient was transferred to our hospital. Uh, in, in this surgery, you can see. The, I am uh, I'm using uh, I'm using uh, uh, the Pentero in this case. You can see the, aneur uh, the coil in the uh, aneurysm is uh, protruded out of aneurysm. The always the re recurrent uh, previous coiled aneurysm always coils is pushed out from the aneurysm like this. But because of uh, the inflammation, the coil is uh, uh, adherent to the, the coil wall, uh, the annulus wall, and the uh, uh, neck like this. And uh, the cut coil uh, can, be, can be pulled out like this. The by four point occlusion of a parent artery, uh, I can confirm inside and uh, exactly uh, you can put a clip, complete neck clipping like this. Now, it's a uh, ICG, the Pentero ICG standard definition. 
the resolution of the ICG is a, a bit broad, but it's okay. It's well treated. The super bypass forceps is uh, very useful to dissect the adhesive structures. You can see here, this is uh, the, the aneurysm, MCA aneurysm. The tiny vessel is attaching on the aneurysm dome. Now, I'm uh, uh, putting the uh, connective tissue between a tiny vessel and the uh, aneurysm. Uh, I am detaching the, the tiny structure, tiny vessel from aneurysm dome like this. Because uh, this forceps is uh, very excellent, has a very excellent slippery modification on the tip. Uh, it's, uh, easy to manipulate like this. I am using a microscope, Mitaka microscope, in this case. So it's uh, very easy to, to see the uh, point to see. Like this. Ah, this is a, a, 20, a 27 year old young boy, uh, young, young man, uh, who's from distal AC aneurysm. At this moment, this patient was a medical student in Tokyo. Uh, two, three grade of a medical school. After this operation, he decided to become a neurosurgeon. After this operation, before this operation, uh, he had uh, no intention to, no, no interest in neurosurgery. But after this operation, he told me, give me this video. And I gave him this video. Then, he decided to become a neurosurgeon. Interesting. Now he's, he's in a residency program in Tokyo now. And uh, he, 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 is, uh, he is now train, has a training of a neurosurgery. Anyway, to treat the aneurysm safely and to become a neurosurgeon, the Ischemic complication does not allow. Like this. The problem is the tiny perforators, uh, so many uh, pa the small perforating arteries is arising from the uh, parent artery beside aneurysm. So to preserve these, uh, even such a small arteries, uh, only aneurysm must be occluded. Here, like this, tiny perforators. And uh, to save the, uh, such a tiny perforators, only clip occlusion uh, did not work well, so I, I stitch it to occlude the, uh, the branch. And uh, in this case, we, uh, I did uh, two A3A3 side-to-side -side anastomosis and the trap tenures. Ah. This is a case of a uh, uh, complication during surgery uh, in a, a vertebra, the large uh, fusiform aneurysm the pica is included in the aneurysm like this. The problem uh, of this patient, 
you can see atherosclerotic change of apparent artery that we can guess. But uh, during surgery, you can see the relatively the, the parent artery condition relatively good. And now I'm uh, preparing a, a pica in the occipital artery, like this. The fishman streaming, 60 degree cut of a uh, uh, edge, and the uh, same length cutting up, fishman streaming. And uh, this is a pica. But uh, this pica is uh, not good. The wall is very thick. And uh, arterial dissection, after the arteriotomy, easily happen. You can see, now the, I am carefully performing arteriotomy, but the wall is very thick. And you can see the intima, it's in, this white one is intima. Intima and uh, the media is easily dissected. So I am doing a, a bottom hole, the continuous suturing to, to fix the uh, dissection. Then you can uh, stitch the uh, standard end to anastomosis. With uh, the continuous bottom hole suturing, the dissection wall is uh, fixed. You can see, like this. The intima is completely uh, fixed to, to adventure. Then uh, we can make the uh, uh, complete end to side anastomosis. Patent occipital pike anastomosis. Otherwise, uh, you can't penetrate the intima and the whole vessels, and it may cause the arterial dissection after anastomosis. Then uh, we can put a clip uh, on the, the end of the neck. You can see very atherosclerotic. Uh, aneurysmal sclerosis. This is aneurysmal sclerosis. Like this. Now, this is a CT angel. The yellow one has an occipital artery. Uh, occipital artery uh, pica anastomosis. I'll show you uh, the example of a uh, not too big uh, the, uh, uh, cranial pharyngioma uh, through the uh, anterior temporal approach, like this. The, with a T2-weighted image, the tumor is uh, elevating third ventricle floor. Uh, we, we are uh, approaching to the, the tumor uh, through the uh, uh, anterior temporal approach. Now, from uh, optical cultural space, the tumor is uh, inside and uh, decompressed. It's an uh, internal decompression. You can see here is uh, the boundary of the tumor between tumor and uh, hypothalamus here. Now, here is uh, the margin of a uh, tumor, tumor capsule. This is a hypothalamus. Uh, connecting to uh, the mammillary body.
the gradually tumor is uh, uh, pulled out and uh, the tumor mass is uh, taken from uh, through the uh, mainly optical cartridge space. And uh, this is the uh, free edge of uh, diaphragma cere, uh, contralateral side. And uh, this is a uh, remnant of a uh, pituitary stalk. In this case, the, I couldn't preserve the uh, pituitary stalk. I, I totally uh, taken out the tumor. Of course, after surgery, patient have a, a insipid, uh, diabetes insipidus uh, and uh, uh, panhypopituitarism, but uh, the the hormonal medication works well, the patient recovered well. In acoustic neuroma, uh, I do uh, acoustic neuroma surgery, neurinoma. Uh, this is not big, big one, but it's a relatively easy one. But before surgery, the uh, patient have, of course, patient have uh, no facial palsy. Uh, this is a right side suboccipital craniotomy. Uh, this is an incision just posterior to uh, internal auditory canal. And uh, this is a bone wax to protect uh, the neural tissue. And uh, this is uh, the exposure of uh, uh, external auditory canal, uh, internal auditory canal posterior, posterior surface. And now I am doing a V cut uh, of the tumor capsule and uh, uh, decompressing the tumor in uh, internal auditory canal. So here is the jugular foramen, nine, 10. Uh, by debulking the tumor, of course, uh, before debulking, uh, we have already checked the location of a facial nerve. In this case, facial nerve is in a ventral side. And uh, this is uh, the root of facial nerve. I am putting the, uh, the electrode on the facial nerve for continuous facial nerve monitoring. This is a cochlear nerve. Uh, this is the facial nerve, which was attaching on the uh, tumor. Uh, in such situation, to dissect the, the tumor uh, and uh, the, to preserve the uh, nerve, the micro scissors and the super bypass forceps is also uh, useful. Uh, this is uh, the the sonopet. Now uh, I am uh, detaching the uh, the facial nerve with the uh, super bypass forceps and confirming the uh, nerve, nerve nerve response with the nerve stimulator. And uh, this is the intracanalicular facial nerve. You can see. and the remaining tumor in uh, uh, internal auditory canal. So here the facial nerve, the remaining tumor on the facial nerve is uh, pulling out with the uh, super bypass forceps. Here, here is the facial nerve in uh, intracanalicular, the internal auditory canal. Still remaining tumor in uh, IAC.
So the phasor knob is uh, coming like this, then turn to an uh, internal auditory canal from uh, root exit zone, the root, and the coming up to the uh, IAC, like this. So this is the final confirmation and the final view of this operation. Uh, MRI scan shows a, a, a post-total removal. Patient, the no facial no palsy. Uh, right side, bit weak now, but uh, uh, this, this is a, a, a three, 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 four days later after surgery, but the patient recovered well. This is uh, uh, another, another pathology, brainstem cavernoma, 28-year-old female. Uh, patient uh, became uh, unconscious, uh, oh, no, no, no. Patient became unconsciousness and uh, 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 hemiparesis because of, uh, of this region. In a previous hospital, previous neurosurgeon decided to observe, to observe the patient, but uh, with a one month observation, a patient became completely tetraplegia and uh, comatose. So the, the young doctor there uh, called me, uh, can you operate? And, and I, I went to the hospital and uh, I operated this patient uh, with the left side uh, suboccipital approach uh, just at the transverse sphingomoid sinus junction like a, a trigeminal neuralgia surgery. Uh, it's the same, same craniotomy but a bit, uh, a bit larger craniotomy than uh, the trigeminal neuralgia. Here, here is the root exit zone of a trigeminal nerve. Uh, in this case, uh, just above the trigeminal nerve, I made a colchicotomy longitudinally here. Now, the, this is a cavernoma. Ah. Just above seven and eight compass, just just inferior to a, a, a trigeminal, and uh, this is the cavernoma. The, it's a, even such a big big cavernoma. It's easy surgery, just a one hour surgery, and then the the. The tumor, the cavernoma, totally, completely removed, and patient recovered immediately. Of course, patient require the, the required the, the rehabilitation uh, for three months because of uh, before before this surgery, patient was comatose and tetraplegia. But uh, after three months uh, rehab rehabilitation. The occupation of this patient is, uh, is a teacher in a, a junior high school. And uh, she recovered well, and uh, now she's re she returned to uh, uh, teaching work. So it's, a, it's a very important to treat kind, this kind of pathology. Uh, this is an example of a super turbo zoom with a 4K high definition uh, video camera. This is a, a left side C3 internal carotid giant aneurysm. As I, uh, as I did yesterday, the STA parietal branch is harvested like, uh, with a cutting down mana uh, just above the uh, parietal branch. And uh, this is a frontal branch harvesting. And uh, after cutting frontal branch, the uh, irrigate inside with heparin as serine, then uh, you can perform the front temporal craniotomy and dissect the cerebral fissure, as I showed you yesterday. Same procedure. 
same way. And now, uh, in this case, I secure the uh, M3 segment, and uh, this is the M2 segment for radial artery bypass. Prior to uh, uh, high flow bypass using radial artery, I always perform SPA uh, MCA bypass. So I usually use the M3 segment and the fish mass trimming of a uh, SPA branch. Same procedure as yesterday. And uh, put the stay suture on here on the toe, 10 0 suture. Then uh, you can put the temporal clip. After all the preparation, then you can put the temporal clip. Without completing a preparation, the, and the you occlude the, the, the recipient, you spend time, you waste time. So temporary occlusion must be done after all the preparation finished, okay? Then uh, we can perform end to side anastomosis. Same manner, same technique. But important thing you can see here, of course, microscope important, good instrument is important, but most important thing, hemostasis. No red cell in the operative field, no red cell. Otherwise, the incomplete hemostasis always disturb you prolong the uh, temporary occlusion time. And uh, the other branch of STA can be cannulated and this cannula is connecting to a pressure transducer to measure the MCA pressure like this. By occluding a STA trunk, uh, you can directly measure the MCA pressure. Now this is the radial artery now uh, after STMC bypass and the measuring MC pressure, the, you can perform a radial artery M2 bypass. You can see the very long uh, arteriotomy on M2 segment. This is the reason why you have to open the distal cerebrum fissure longitudinally widely. Sufficient length of uh, uh, distal cerebrum dissection is necessary to perform a uh, the sufficient uh, size of uh, end to side anastomosis like this. You see? And uh, high speed zooming is necessary to shorten the temporary occlusion time. You can see the zooming is very fast, quick. <laughs> very quick. Then with this the high speed microscope, you can shorten the temporary occlusion time Every neurosurgeon knows shortening the uh, temporal occlusion time is very important. We have to make the effort to shorten the temporal occlusion time in uh, microanastomosis. If I was a patient, if you are patient, if your family, your wife, your children were patient, the temporal occlusion time must be shortened. Everybody think. So for a daily, for in a daily surgery for a patient, same thing we should do, okay? Same thing with your family, with your wife, with your children, with your family. Same thing we should do it. And after finishing one side, uh, from the other side, confirm inside whether there is uh, the marrow stitch or liver stitching. Uh, we, we should confirm then nothing happened, no malfunction happened, then you can begin to stitch the other side. And the other advantage of fish mass trimming like this, you can see with the donor triangular flap, it's uh, Downward, downward in the recipient, and uh, the the both intima of a recipient and the donor is uh, attaching each other in this situation. 
So it's easy to penetrate both walls with one action, with a counter force, with your left hand forceps. Then you can penetrate with one hand action both pressure walls. It makes short temporal occlusion time. You see? So absolutely, you should run. You, you, must, uh, you must understand. Fish mass trimming helps a lot to shorten the temporal occlusion times. Fish mass trimming, 60 degree cut of donor, and the same length cutting up, 60 degree, and uh, make the uh, stitching length longer. Stitching length long is not, uh, is not a cause of a prolongation of a temporal occlusion time. Prolongation of a temporal occlusion time, the cause is always bleeding, always bad hemostasis. Clean operative field, you can see everything easily, then you can shorten the stitching, you see? This is very important. Many of neurosurgeons misunderstood. Stitching length, if stitching length is wrong, the temporary occlusion wrong, it's, it's wrong. If you spent one stitch, one minute, more than one minute, your training is not sufficient. One stitch must be finished in one minute, less than one minute. Until you can get, you, you can do the one, within one minute, one stitch. You should train. You should have a practice every day. You see? It's very important. So, in conclusion, zooming speed of microscope is very important. It's affect to a temporal occlusion time. You should use a short. Uh, you should use a short zooming time microscope. Mitaka microscope. Mitaka is the best in the world. Uh, I'm pressuring. Uh, I'm pressurizing uh, uh, Mitaka company to spread it, to bring it to Russia. I have already told them. So you can you can uh, you can use it in near future. You see, and uh, I showed you a 0 0.5 second zooming speed, but currently I'm using a 0 0.1 second zooming. The, it it is so called uh, ultra ultra super turbo zooming. 0 0.5 is a super turbo zooming. Uh, one second is a uh, uh, turbo zooming. Turbo zooming to uh, change to a super turbo, and now ultra super turbo zooming, 0 0.1 second. Uh, if Mitaka br uh, brought the, their microscope to Russia, you can get a ultra super turbo zooming. Yeah. And the super bypass, it's a very important. To, to do accurate stitching. Not only stitching, but also dissection of tumor, dissection of the uh, important vessel, important structures from the aneurysm. It helps a lot. That's it. Thank you very much. Всегда говорится, не говорится, но все понимают, насколько это важно для создания хорошего анастомоза, для того, чтобы, прежде всего, пациент после такой хирургии аневризм именно получил ему говорится, максимально пользы, а не просто много анастомозов, но пациент почему-то в рэнкинг 4 или 5. Да? Задавайте вопрос. К микрофону подойдите. Включите его там. Просто вверх. Вверх поднимите. Да. Угу. Your presentation. My question about uh, radial artery graft. Uh, if uh, the patient has uh, 
very bad, uh, very narrow radial artery. Do you use a safane vein in this case? Yeah, yeah. I have uh, the, the one case of a very bad uh, radial artery. That was, uh, uh, that was uh, around a 60-year-old man in uh, Taiwan, uh, in Taipei. I was invited to operate the patient. And uh, I planned a radial artery graft for, that was a cavernous giant angiogram. And uh, I harvested the, the radial artery uh, just a five centimeter at the beginning. The distal artery, uh, radial artery has uh, so many arterial plaques. That I tried to, to find a good part, but uh, this patient has a totally the very thick artery uh, uh, plaques. So I decided to abandon to use it. That I, I took a saphenous from lower leg. And in such case, I would have to switch for, to uh, the saphenous vein graft. Even in such patient, but the saphenous, or even saphenous vein has a plaque, but uh, was much better than the radial artery. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. And uh, in your opinion, uh, what minimum diameter of uh, radial artery graft is uh, uh, good to uh, use for, uh, for grafting? What minimum diameter of radial artery? Ah, uh, minimum, 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 minimum size. Uh, depends on the patient collateralist. Uh, as we published in uh, uh, Journal of Neurosurgery in 2017, the, the diameter of the graft, regardless radial artery or uh, other, bra uh, other graft, the it uh, it's, uh, depends on the, pa uh, the patient collateralist. But uh, in our experience, if patient, the radial artery uh, diameter was more than 3.5 millimeter, uh, it's uh, good enough, it's uh, sufficient. Less than, we have to be careful, less than 3.5 millimeter to three millimeter. Uh, di di this uh, range of uh, diameter of radial artery may uh, may weak to provide a sufficient blood flow. So, to confirm this, the STMCA uh, bypass and uh, uh, MCA pressure monitoring through STMCA is uh, uh, important and helps to uh, to uh, evaluate whether the, the graft radial artery graft is sufficient or not. Thank you. I understand you. And uh, the last question about uh, the, uh, how many uh, zero stitches you uh, use in uh, cases uh, when you perform high flow bypass, 10 zero uh, or nine zero? For radial artery M2 bypass, I use a nine zero. Nine zero. Nine zero. But it uh, depends on the, the thickness and the hardness of the uh, uh, arterial graft. Sometimes uh, we need an eight zero. Uh, we, uh, I have been using uh, uh, et, 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 uh, etilon. Etilon. Mm -hmm. uh, etilon ten zero suit, ten zero needle is excellent. The dif the discrepancy of the, the girth of the needle and the uh, thread thickness similar. But uh, nine zero eighty zero, uh, the needle is is uh, much. Uh, much wide, wider, much thicker. So this this causes uh, the the leakage from the needle hole. So I prefer ten zero. <laughs> but uh, in a big vessel, you have to use a nine zero eight zero. To to solve this problem, uh, nowadays uh, we have a very good uh, uh, new micro thread from a Japanese company. Uh, Japanese company, uh, uh, Crown, Crown, uh, Crown Junk, Crown. Uh, they provide uh, any size of a uh, micro thread and a needle. And uh, I told them to develop uh, the, the uh, no, no discrepancy size of a needle and uh, the thickness of a thread. And uh, the, they are trying to develop uh, such an excellent one. And uh, they can provide a, a very, 
very tiny size of a threat. Maximum size currently is 12 zero. But uh, they, they told me they can provide uh, even 20 zero if necessary. So uh, depends on your, uh, the, depends on your hope the, they can answer, they can respond. So now I am switching to use a crown, <laughs> crown microset. Okay, thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Professor, for your presentation. Excellent. And question is, um, uh, do you use antiplatelet therapy uh, before, during, and after bypass surgery? Yes, uh, basically, yes. Uh, when I perform the, uh, the high flow bypass using radial artery for uh, a giant aneurysm or something, uh, basically, this kind of patient who has a giant aneurysm has always a bad condition of a parent arteries, atherosclerotic change. This means that uh, uh, we need an antiplatelet agent, basically. Mm -hmm. But uh, mm, just to maintain the, the patency of a, a radial artery graft, the antiplatelet agent is not necessary. But the most important thing to add to administrate the antiplatelet is to maintain the, the blood flow into a uh, perforating artery territory. Because uh, the cavernous giant aneurysm is not a problem. But uh, if aneurysm was located at the supraclinal segment, especially uh, uh, including a picoma or anterior corridor artery, after trapping the, the aneurysm, the anterior corridor artery or PCOM is just beside the stump occlusion. In such case, with a bad condition of parent artery, even if the bypass works well, the anterior corridor artery may be occluded uh, later, two, three days later. So to, to prevent uh, such a complication, uh, we always use anti protelet at least one week uh, before of the surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, do you uh, uh, administrate only aspirin or something else, uh, clopidogrel and? Basically, uh, we use uh, aspirin, uh, okay. only aspirin before surgery. Okay. But uh, uh, we can confirm the uh, condition of uh, parent artery, atherosclerotic change. The directly, we can confirm in the operative field. So if, uh, if uh, we uh, uh, feel the, the only aspirin was not sufficient to prevent uh, such a perforated artery occlusion, uh, we add the uh, clopidogrel okay. or okay. cirrhosis or something. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Thank you, Professor. So okay. if uh, we, we can continue, uh, I think it would be uh, yeah, probably a last, a last lecture. Yeah. Uh, okay. So if you uh, couldn't mind, we can proceed to the next. Uh, I will show you uh, uh, basics of uh, microanastomosis. As I told you, most important thing is uh, hemostasis. Hemostasis. This is a dural closure 
uh, as we did yesterday too. Uh, basically, I use uh, the five zero uh, five zero proline or pronova. This is a pronova five zero uh, under microscope. Why? It's a basic dimension to stitch the dura to avoid the, the water leakage. If the dura thickness was like this, the stitching bite should be twice of the dura thickness. And uh, penetrating, and the other side penetrating here. So this distance should be four times of dura thickness. And the uh, stitching interval should be the same, four times of wall thickness. So this uh, area can be, can be said square, four times of uh, wall thickness square. With the square stitching, uh, you have no leakage. This is a, a basic principle. And uh, the, the program of a dural closure, especially CSF leakage, water cannot be coagulated, cannot be stuck. But uh, vascular anastomosis, blood can be coagulated, can be stuck automatically. So uh, in, a, uh, in a different saying, in different words, the dural closure is much difficult than uh, the vessel stitching, especially in, uh, the, in about the leakage. And the one more important thing is the uh, everything of uh, each vessel wall, donor wall, Recipient wall must be facing each other intima intima, like this. If you make the, uh, this condition of a both vessel wall, as I told you in, in a previous lecture, you can, you can penetrate both wall with one action with a counter force. You see? It's easy if you make this condition. The bad, worst thing is uh, inverting. Adventure, adventure, ad uh, attachment. And the uh, cutting edge of a vessel wall is exposing inside of a lumen. It's worst. This kind of anosmosis cannot be patent. To make this condition, fish mass trimming is quite important. At the end of a donor, 60 degree oblique cut and the same length cut up. And with 60 degree oblique cut, this length must be uh, two times divided by root three of the, the shrunk diameter of a recipient. You understand? So this length is 4D divided by root 3. It means 2.3 times of a shrunk diameter of a recipient. So I, I, I told you if, you, if you make the fish mouse trimming, stitching lengths become longer, more than 2.3 times. 2.3 times. but. It makes helps. It makes to shorten the, the temporary occlusion time, and it make it make it easier to stitch the vessel. Because with this fish mouse trimming, you can you can imagine with fish mouse trimming, this part triangular flap of a donor can can downward, can be downward on the recipient after stay suture, here and here and the toe, after stay suture, after fixing on the recipient, this part of the donor can be downward 
in the, in the arteriotomy of the recipient. Then the donor wall and the res recipient wall can be faced each other. This is a trick. In spite of a very long stitching length, stitching is easier and the stitching time, occlusion time, can be shorter. So, this is the same principle with the dural stitching. In a microvascular anastomosis, the stitching bite must be twice of a wall thickness. This is a principle. And the interval must be four times of wall thickness. Donor wall, recipient wall. You see? So when you, you make a practice by yourself, please understand and please remember this principle. And under microscope, the you need to, to follow this principle, you see? And uh, end to side, end to end, uh, the side to side anastomosis, like A3A3. A3. This picture uh, was drawn by Professor Kamiyama, my mentor, uh, more than 30 years ago. Basically, we, we performed the uh, symmetrical uh, in a, cu in a cu curved arteriotomy, like this. And if, if you are a right-handed man, the first stitch uh, should be from a left side and a right side. Then, the, like this. This is a, a animation like this. If you are right-handed, like this, the stitch uh, need, needle can be uh, can be done like this. The the important thing you have to be careful. The I inferior wall must be stitched meticulously because after opening the bypass, if you have a leakage from the inferior wall, you can't stop the bleeding, especially uh, from the interval of stitch. So the interval of stitch must be appropriate, not too long, okay? And the uh, uh, finishing of uh, uh, inferior wall must be finished at the uh, the right side, right side vessel, if you are right-handed. Uh, first, first penetration at the proximal of the left vessel, like this, then coming and the finishing in the right side, from in to out, you see? Then you can tie it. Then you can tie it. Okay. One quick question. Uh, this is a. Uh, uh, end to side anastomosis, radial artery. You can see after uh, stay suture, the, here is a heel side first stitch next to a stay suture. This part is the most difficult stitching point. And now everything and uh, it's easy to penetrate with one action. You can penetrate both vessels.
these are the uh, uh, principle of the uh, microanosmosis. I have been performing uh, the therapeutic carotid occlusion with the high flow bypass, basically using radial artery bypass. These are the representative cases of a high flow bypass, therapeutic carotid occlusion. Uh, the ICA distal uh, giant aneurysm, cavernous and the petra segment giant aneurysm, C1, C2, uh, multiple large aneurysm, and the C1 aneurysm. We have uh, more than 100 cases of experience of a therapeutic carotid occlusion. The fortunately, graft patency rate, 96%. Uh, and the uh, decanalization of uh, aneurysm was 1.7%, uh, two cases in 117 cases. The, in uh, C4 giant, the cavernous giant aneurysms. And the uh, post-operative operative rupture was zero. The location of, of aneurysm like this. Size of aneurysm, a giant was uh, 85%. And uh, we use a radial artery in 74%. And uh, graft occlusion in uh, four cases, in the radial artery, one, and the three cases in saphenous, mainly in, mainly in saphenous. Outcome. Overall, the outcome, the modified ranking scale, 0 to 2, overall around 95%. Giant aneurysm, similar. Large aneurysm, no bad patient. Ruptured blood blister like aneurysm, 67% uh, was good. Uh, Remaining 33% was modified ranking scale three because of a subarachnoid hemorrhage, primary brain damage affected. The important thing that we have no mortality, even in a blood blister aneurysm. This is very important. As I told you, the, we are doing MCA pressure monitoring through a STA MCA bypass like this. After STMCA bypass, the, the other branch of STA is cannulated and connect to a pressure transducer, occlude the STA trunk, then we can measure the MCA pressure directly, in this case 63 in mean pressure, mean pressure MCA, MCA 62 millimeter. Now internal clot is occluded, and you can see the pressure MC pressure is declined around 43 millimercury, 43 millimercury. And then carot, um, graft is open immediately, MC pressure recover, and the MC pressure recover 57. The, the pressure ratio is uh, control was 62, so it's a 0 0.92, you see? And the uh, ICG angel shows a good feeling. The, we have to be careful, even if the ICG angel shows a good feeling, it does not, uh, uh, it, it doesn't guarantee of the uh, uh, good functioning of the graft. Even the ICG showed, showed well, the provided flow was not sufficient, may, may not be sufficient. To confirm the provided flow is sufficient or not, we need uh, something real-time monitor. The MCA pressure monitoring is a, a real-time monitor. With the MCA pressure monitoring, we can detect the uh, malfunction of the graph. Now, same thing, IC occlusion, MC pressure is declining, you see? And uh, radial artery graph now, 
We open it. Open. The blood is calm. The, it's pulsating, but MC pressure cannot be re recovered. Why? I'm feeling the pulsation, but the, you can see, twisting. 180 degree twisted. So, the ECS side radial artery is uh, detached and uh, pull out the uh, graft again and uh, confirm. Of course, confirm the uh, backflow after opening here. And the MCS, uh, M2 side was good, no problem. Then again, re anastomose. And the ICA occluded, MCA declined. And bypass open. Now MC pressure recovered immediately. Like this. So I have a uh, more than hundred experience of high flow bypass, especially in. Uh, the therapeutic carotid occlusion. Not only uh, uh, therapeutic carotid occlusion uh, for uh, carotid aneurysm, other, other radial artery graft experience, I, I have around 200 cases, maybe. But uh, even me, the, the even, even the experienced neurosurgeon, uh, have the uh, uh, such a such a malfunction of a graft during the surgery. It may happen, twisting or kinking, because the graft must be must be placed in uh, 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 invisible area. Especially in this case, you can see graft is in a submandibular root. The only we can confirm uh, above the craniotomy. And in the neck, we can see only this small part. In small part, we can see the graft. Other, other main part here in the submandibular root, we can't confirm directly. It's not visible. In this area, always happens a problem. Something happens. So uh, to avoid uh, such a malfunction of a graft, we need uh, something monitoring. And the next question is, uh, even if we, we can perform the uh, uh, good bypass, as uh, Andre uh, asked me in, 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 a, in a previous question, uh, how much the graft size is good, uh, is appropriate for high flow bypass? Depends on, I, I, I answered, depends on the patient collateralist power. In our experience, if MCA pressure ratio was less than 80% during surgery, patient always have the hemodynamic ischemic condition after surgery, like a TIA, like a tentative hemo, uh, hemiparesis or uh, aphasia as a TIA, or minor stroke in a watershed area between ACA, MCA, between MCA, PCA. So answer, the answer to avoid a, such a complication is MCA pressure ratio must be more than 80% before, before and after MCA pressure. Uh, the MCA pressure after bypass opening divided by uh, control MCA pressure must be more than 80%. So uh, we can evaluate the bypass graft uh, with the uh, MCA pressure. So. The definition, control MCAP, MCA pressure, before occlusion of ICA. 
definition of ICO, ICO MCF. This is a, a after occlusion of ICA, ICA occlusion MCA pressure. This is a equivalent with stern pressure during balloon test occlusion before surgery. And uh, bypass MCAP, this means after opening the graft. So, uh, with, this, with these three parameters, we can calculate residual MCAP ratio, ICO MCA pressure during ICA occlusion MCA pressure divided by control MCA pressure. And the stern pressure in balloon test occlusion before surgery is equivalent with ICO MCAP, you see? So in a balloon test occlusion before surgery, if stern pressure divided by control I, uh, in, internal carotid artery pressure was more than 0 0.8, there are no indication of a high flow bypass. You can, you can simply occlude the ICA. Nothing happened. So the, the MCAP ratio, bypass MCAP, MCA pressure after opening graft divided by control MCA pressure should be more than 0 0.8. Less than 0 0.8, uh, more than 0 0.8, no escape complication. We have published it on the World Neurosurgery in 2015. You can find it. Next question is, how can we Obtain the, the, how can we decide the uh, appropriate size of the graft? As uh, Andre asked. With the MCA pressure monitoring, the, we can uh, consider the, the logics. Everybody knows Hagen pose is low. Uh, blood flow is proportional to a uh, uh, graft diameter, the, the, the uh, pipe, pipe, pipe cross-sectional area. Okay, so flow is proportional to the square of the diameter of the, graft, the vessel. It's a simple. So we can uh, uh, we can consider the model uh, of the, uh, uh, ice, uh, the, the therapeutic carotid occlusion. In a standard condition, in the normal condition, before surgery or the without aneurysm, the ICA provides a blood flow like this from, from uh, our heart. The blood is transferred to the brain. We have uh, three collaterals, ACOM cross flow from the other side, PCOM Olcock flow from vertebral basal system, and the left meningeal anastomosis between ACA uh, MCA or between PCA MCA. You see? Uh, in this condition, we can, we can make the, uh, such a model, how the, the brain circulation, brain provided blood flow in brain, how it is, it is made. Totally, totally, the, this is the total brain blood flow. ICA blood flow may be like this, and the total collateral flow like this. The, because of the depend, depends on, based on the, based on the, the ICA flow power and the collateral flow power, 
uh, some, something we, the, they have the uh, uh, balancing. But uh, if ICA was occluded, if ICA was occluded, the anti-grade flow does not come, then the collateral flow is working, begin to work. So the, if ICA flow declined, the collateral flow bit uh, uh, increased. And if the increasing collateral flow was more than 0 0.8 in such situation, and if we perform the therapeutic cultural occlusion with a graft, regardless radial artery or saphenous, between uh, ECA to MCA and occlude ICA, Usually, radial artery diameter is smaller than internal carotid. Everybody knows. But uh, in, a, in a normal condition, cervical internal carotid is larger. Gradually tapering, the, the diameter is tapering, getting smaller. And in the intracranial part, supracranial segment ICA is the smallest in the carotid artery. After dividing ophthalmic artery, supracranial segment carotid, the diameter is the smallest in the carotid artery system. Neck is bigger. So in this condition, the provided blood flow by the internal carotid artery is uh, determined by the size of the supracranial carotid diameter. For example, if patient have the very uh, arteriosclerotic change at the supracranial very hard stenosis, the provided flow is declining. So the provided flow by the ICA is uh, determined by the size of a supracranial carotid diameter. So we can measure the diameter of a supracranial carotid on the angiogram. And uh, we make the uh, high flow bypass with a graft, occlude ICA. Then provided blood flow by graft uh, must be smaller than uh, the blood flow by the ICA. And the uh, total collateral power basically uh, same before and after the, the graft opening or the before graft opening, okay? So, the blood flow is uh, proportional to the cross-sectional area of a uh, vessel diameter. So it's, a, it's a proportional to a, a square of diameter. So this part provided by graft um, can be calculated like this. You see? The residual value here by collateral flow uh, defined K so this part is one minus K, uh, which is provided by ICA. And uh, this blue part is uh, proportional to the uh, diameter ratio. Small r is graft. The larger r, the ICA supraclinal segment. Uh, it's a simple math. Uh, we, the, the, this relationship can be uh, uh, expressed like this. Expected flow ratio by graft is like, like this formula. We have published it on the Journal of Neurosurgery in 2016. So you, you can find it and then carefully read it so you can understand. So with this formula, Uh, we, uh, with this uh, quadratic function, we can plot the graph. Uh, depends on the K value. K value is the residual flow, the stand pressure. The, when 
we, uh, we, uh, the K value was uh, 0 0.4 during a balloon test occlusion. The MCA pressure ratio must be plot like this. X axis is uh, the small r divided by large r. Depends on the k value. And the k value was 0 0.8, like this. Even no bypass, nothing happened. You see? So, Ah, this is a this is a previous paper. CBF must be more than eighty percent. You see, it's it's a important. So with this formula, we can calculate. Uh, if you modify uh, this this formula to uh, to uh, the uh, R is uh, uh, calculated with this formula, with this. If flow ratio more than 0 0.8, flow ratio more than 0 0.8, 0 0.8 input here, like this, with this formula. And uh, simply, if the K value collateral was zero, K was zero. R due to 0 0.8. This means that uh, very poor collateral, no collateral, the graft diameter must be 0 0.9 compared to a spiraclinal carotid diameter. You see? Otherwise, always ischemia happens. So, we, but uh, we can calculate the spiraclinal carotid diameter on the angiogram. If the spiraclinal carotid diameter was four millimeter on the angiogram, and uh, if and uh, the patient had no collateralis, uh, we can put the four millimeter to here. So, the radial artery graft size must be more than 3.6 millimeter. At worst, patient had no collateral. Graft size more than 3.3 millimeter. If spiraclinal carotid was 4 millimeter. Depends on the, the carotid size and depends on the patient collaterals. So, to get uh, this parameter, K value before surgery, we can get the K value in a balloon test occlusion. I see in cervical ICA pressure and the stand pressure. These two parameters provide a K value. You see? And uh, small r and large r. Small r is a graft diameter, large r spiraclinal carotid diameter. Before surgery, we can get both on the angiogram. K value, of course. So we can get the flow ratio before surgery. And the flow ratio was uh, more than 0 0.8, then you can use the radial artery. You see? It's a, it's a simple math. Now it's uh, difficult to understand uh, this. Uh, this uh, <laughs> because my explanation is poor. But uh, you can carefully read the, our paper. We, we have uh, published it, this one, uh, on the Journal of Neurosurgery in 2017. Carefully read it. Then uh, you can understand. Anyway, this is uh, very uh, helpful to decide uh, which size of uh, uh, graft size 
graft is appropriate or not. Okay. And uh, another important issue is the size of a recipient. Even if you you can get uh, you can provide the appropriate size of a graft. For example, if you anastomose radial artery or saphenous vein graft on a cortical MCA, one millimeter cortical MCA, is it works as a high flow bypass? No. Because a very small recipient become a bottleneck. So we can calculate, we can consider how can we understand? Because in the end to side manner, provided blood flow by the graft is divided to proximally and distally on in the recipient artery. If the peripheral resistance of the MCA was similar in the distal area and the proximal area, the total blood flow provided graft is divided 50%, 50%. So, blood flow is uh, proportional to a cross-sectional area. So, the definition of small r in this schema, definition of small r is diameter of recipient. La large r is diameter of graph. So the, this uh, relationship, uh, AR means uh, area of recipient here. Cross-sectional area must be twice, 50%, 50%. So two AR must be bigger than uh, AD. AD means uh, the area of donor. You see? This, this formula is, uh, uh, can be considered. So, AR can be calculated pi R square, uh, pi, pi R square divided four because uh, the R is a diameter, not a, not a, so the, uh, half of the diameter. <laughs> Anyway, uh, and uh, cross area, cross sectional area of a donor uh, can be calculated like this by large R square divided four. So it can be simply like this. R square must be more than 0 0.5 uh, square of large, uh, large R. This means uh, the root to 0 0.5 uh, times of uh, donor diameter. This is almost 0 0.7. Okay? So, recipient size diameter must be more than 70% to a uh, donor. If radial artery was a 3.6 millimeter, how much is it? 0 0.7? Uh, 3.6 times 0 0.7 is 2.5. The recipient size must be 2.5 millimeter. Mm. 2.5 millimeter is the average size of M2 segment in general. So this is the reason why we use the M2 segment as a recipient in a high flow bypass. Larger one. Larger one usually an uh, inferior trunk of M2. Sometimes super trunk has, is larger, but uh, in, in general, in many patients, inferior trunk is larger. You see? This is very important. And uh, uh, these are uh, discussed in, in this paper. Please uh, carefully read it. So summary, the principle square stitch, regardless dural stitch, vessel stitch, 
Lengths of a bite, bite length should be two times of wall thickness of a vessel wall. Interval of stitch should be four times of wall thickness. And the fish must trimming. 60 degree oblique cut at the donor end. And the same length cutting out. Everything makes intima, intima, okay? intima, intima, attachment. And the arteriotomy length of side to side anastomosis uh, must be three times to make the orifice bigger. Bottom side always inverting, side to side, inverting, not everything, side to side. This is a problem. This is the reason why the arteriotomy length in the side to side anastomosis should be more than three times of the diameter. diameter. And the flow ratio in uh, therapeutic carotid occlusion can be calculated uh, with this formula. And the diameter of M2 must be more than 0 0.7 times to donor diameter. You see? This is a, a basic uh, dimension and the principle and uh, uh, rationale to, to choose the appropriate graft size in a, a therapeutic carotid occlusion with high flow body mass. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. Any questions? Вопрос, пожалуйста. Да. Thank you, Professor, uh, for your lecture. Uh, my question about two R's, small and uh, big R in your formula to calculate uh, expected blood flow. Uh, is the small R, uh, is the minimal or maximum diameter of uh, graft uh, the graft has uh, two ah, ends. Yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, minimal, mi minimal part should be used uh, for calculation, of course. Minimal part. Yeah, yeah. And the uh, uh, big R, uh, you measure the big R uh, in which uh, part of C2 segment? In ophthalmic part, in uh, uh, choroidal part, uh, in which uh, uh, part of C2? Uh, usually, uh, the I, I calculate uh, the uh, distal to the aneurysm. Distal to the aneurysm. Yeah. The, the just distal. Just distal to the aneurysm. Uh, just this uh, sometimes uh, affected by the aneurysm, a uh, uh, bit bigger. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 looks, uh, the, the, the part which looks normal. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you so much. Другие вопросы, коллеги? Такой возможности, сами понимаете, редко, когда можно профессора спрашивать не просто там клинических кейсах, а именно о гидродинамике анастомозов, то, что в принципе он на самом деле вот, мастер-классы, которые он проводит в Саппоро, так называемые фен-корсы, они в основном посвящены именно вот, прежде всего гемодинамике, как правильно дышить, что, куда, поэтому спрашивайте, пока есть возможность. Another one question about uh, recipient uh, part of high flow bypass. You always use a maximum uh, uh, of um, diameter of M2 segment or not? Always use maximum diameter of M2 trunk. Sorry, inferior or inferior? You, you, you always use uh, the uh, trunk, M2 trunk uh, in maximum diameter. Uh, or always use inferior trunk to recipient side of high flow bypass. Uh, uh, here is the question: uh, How often, uh, as I understood, how often you are using 
temporal parietal branch of MCA. Yeah? M2, M2 segment. Yeah, yes. M2 inferior, uh, a large, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. or another name of the uh, temporal parietal uh, trunk of M2, uh, of MCA. Or you uh, prefer to use sometimes an upper uh, ah, yeah, uh, yeah. trunk of a... If uh, inferior trunk wa was uh, too small, the, we can use a super trunk. It depends on the, the patient, the si size of uh, the, the M2, M2 segment. Depends, depends. Okay, yeah. thank you. But uh, you know, the, uh, if we use a super trunk, uh, and uh, if you prolong the temporal occlusion time, it, uh, the risk of uh, ischemia yeah, of uh, motor function. So th this is the biggest reason why uh, we do not want to use a uh, super trunk. And uh, the inferior trunk is usually bigger than super trunk. But sometimes yeah. uh, is, uh, super trunk is yes. more. Yes, so it depends on. Thank you. Еще вопрос, коллеги мои. Ну, да, давайте тогда я задам уже последний вопрос, которых, потому что у меня из YouTube тут постоянно смс из зала. Uh, professor, I think it will be the last question before the finishing uh, our conference. It's a usual question for you, as uh, so many doctors here in the room and uh, uh, those who are watching us on YouTube are asking about how to uh, buy your instruments. Maybe you just uh, show the contacts uh, details uh, for the uh, doctors where they can uh, buy this instrument, uh, where they can order this kind of devices, like a suction, uh, suction first of all, etc. Now the, the dealer of my instruments is uh, in Auto Japan, uh, Muto America. Uh, the Mr. Otsuka, uh, he's a He's the president of uh, Muto America. And uh, uh, you, can, you, can, uh, you can access him uh, with e by email. And uh, you know, they, they can provide. Окей, okay, thank you. В принципе, если, наверное, думаю, все поняли, что сейчас имеется представительство на компании в Соединенных Штатах Америки, непосредственно японских инструментов. Понятно, что производится, естественно, это уже и в Штатах, и на штатовском оборудовании, но тем не менее, в принципе, возможно связаться. Эти инструменты лицензированы. Я знаю, некоторые компании у нас в России провели уже лицензирование части инструментария, поэтому это не то, что мы идем каким-то там противозаконным путем или там out of label. Соответственно, я думаю, что мы, если будут вопросы, я просто вышлю по e-mail контакты вот именно представителей вот этой компании и напрямую каждый может связаться с, с этой компанией и решить для себя, хотят ли они что-то заказывать или нет. Либо, опять же, через представителей у нас в России, кто непосредственно лицензирует этот инструментарий. Какие еще будут вопросы? I think uh, we are finishing uh, the conference. Thank you very much. Uh, thank, you. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your great job, uh, for your uh, skills, uh, for your just philosophy, which you uh, presented to us, uh, to sharing with us. Uh, it's a very uh, prominent and main topic uh, especially for the uh, neurosurgeons who are not only just beginning the uh, vascular procedures but for experience too because every time when we are uh, operating uh, hard difficult cases we always need to uh, realize and, and understand the philosophy of uh, this uh, uh, cases how to make uh, the patient uh, in good condition after the operation not only just technique. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you.
коллеги, уважаемый профессор, я хочу от имени участников э, мастер-класса поблагодарить вас за блестящий проведенный курс, за лекции, блестяще выполненную операцию. Я думаю, что очень многие... Э, много чего для себя увидели в вашем исполнении. Прекрасная техника. Я, даже я, по сравнению с молодыми, многие приемы у вас возьму на вооружение. Я надеюсь, что мы будем сотрудничать и дальше, более плотно. И в ближайшее время не только, Павел Валерьевич, если вы позволите, я найду молодежь в институте, которая сначала докажет, что они способны к обучению, и, если вы позволите, я отправлю их к вам. Еще раз спасибо. Если кто-то хочет что-то сказать, пожалуйста. И в конце я самых волевых хочу предложить здесь вот встать и сделать на память фотографию вместе с профессором и его командой. Спасибо. Спасибо. Oh, professor, uh, sorry, uh, I, my name is Чингис, I came from, from Kyrgyzstan and I want to uh, say just uh, thank you for your uh, precious time uh, for, for your precious time and sharing your um, success results and I wish you and your team um, continued uh, success and good health uh, thank you uh, I was very happy to hear your presentations um, and uh, I would especially I'd mm, like to thank uh, Dr. Pavel Valerich uh, for the opportunity to be here. Uh, thank you.